I wouldn't say the, the burden of proof primarily falls on either, but I would say that dismissing people making the case for lab leak and the kind of ad hominem attacks and calling them uh, grifters and conspiracy theorists, I, I don't agree with that. Part two, follow the money. Isn't that the ancient principle of journalism? You yes. Know, you, and it always seems as though those with the most to lose have the most invested interest in promoting the thesis that continues their funding. And isn't it clear that they can always use their expertise as a shibboleth to hide behind the fact that they're just simply trying to keep that income coming so they don't have to live in a neighborhood filled with super predators. Every group wants to protect its expertise and encircle the, the wagons. And there are all sorts of professional reasons why virologists would have contempt for the lab leak hypothesis. It would be really cool. bad for them. If you cool. were a virologist and it came out that the pandemic came from a, a lab leak, your status would, would plunge. Some people would be spat on. Five years from now, this is just going to be a joke that it was even you know, like a, a, an opposite case would have been considered, you know? A non lab a non lab leak theory would have even been considered, and the same thing goes for global warming. It's the exact same thing. Science is funded by national science grants, and there's so many projects tied to this global warming hypothesis that they've circled the wagons around this, and then this circling of the wagons is in itself seen as evidence. Yes, the famous ninety. 97 percent you're threatening the process of science itself you're yeah. not you're, you're threatening you know the funding base of science I, if something is incredibly small or incredibly big that your average person can't apply their common sense to it you can you can grift on it